I watched a lot of WBA growing up because I was kind of always around coaches. I was always around someone in the basketball world. With the 10th pick in the 2016 WNBA draft, the Chicago Sky select Imani Boyette from the University of Texas. It's exciting that it's like my turn to be the one getting watched. Get that big interior presence, 6'7". The Sky are a very dangerous team. I'm excited to go to Chicago and give it all I got. And we are thrilled to have Imani Boyette join the show now. Imani, you just saw it there. You at the draft. What was it like to hear your name called in that setting last week? It was so surreal. Like, I think that's just all I could say. Like, I was shaking. I was just trying to focus on not falling. The steps are really high. <laughs> it was just fun. Like, it was a great experience and just kind of the culmination of four years. What's been your impression of the Chicago Sky organization so far? I love my head coach. I hear she's like super strict and she will yell in a second, but it's like warranted and stuff. But so far, I've only gotten the nice side. So it's super fun. Like she talks to me every now and then and checks in and stuff. And we had had a couple conversations before the draft. So I'm excited to play for her. She was like really excited about me. So I'm excited about her. No, I don't want to get in trouble with Coach Karen Aston, but we've seen her lay into you guys into practice. So it's not going to be that much different, right? I guess not, right? <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'll be prepared for it. And Heidi said that if I can survive a Karen Aston practice, I will be fine at Chicago. There you go. See Karen Aston getting these players ready for the next level. Where you were one of 12 players invited to the draft show this year. Among that group, UConn's Brianna Stewart, uh, Mariah Jefferson, Morgan Tuck. You had the chance to play this UConn team twice in the tournament. What was it like then to go through this experience with those three young ladies? I think it's much easier on their side because they're just like, oh, yeah, we played, whatever. While everyone else was just like, we lost to you. Because everyone there had lost to UConn at some point in their career. So everyone had the, the bad feeling in their face. But they're all really cool. And like growing up playing basketball, if you're like good, you kind of play everyone. So I played before. Before they got to UConn, I played with them and after. So we're all, it, it was just kind of fun. Like we all got to experience it together. Like throwing away college because now we're pros and stuff. So Is it nice to be among a group of elite women like that? Definitely. It kind of just makes you, like, Stand up a little taller, you know, like you get to invite it. You got invited to this and everyone was kind of recognizing how hard you worked and saying that you deserved to be here. And we got to meet some of the greats. We got to meet Cheryl Swoops, Rebecca Lobo, Lisa Leslie, Tina Charles, like all of those players. And like I had Tina Charles sophomore stats on my lock, my um, dorm room wall my sophomore year to kind of measure myself. And I got to hug her and I told her and it was like so awesome. So out of all of those, was that the one you were most starstruck by? Yeah, I like fangirled a little bit. <laughs> Nothing wrong with fangirling. I've done it from time to time. All right, well, your husband, Paul Boyette, is an incredibly supportive partner when it comes to your professional ambitions. But did he make it to the draft? I heard there was a little bit of a hang-up. It was a very long day. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up making it right after, like, everything had happened. So we got to take pictures, like, as they were breaking down the set and stuff. But he started his day at 4 a.m. for his 6 a.m. flight and just terrible chain of events. Had to go through security twice, miss his flight, got put onto a second flight, got bumped off the connecting flight, and no one goes to Hartford. So there was only one other flight that would have came in at like 8 p.m. So he ended up flying from Charlotte to New York and getting driven to Connecticut. Wow, this he, poor guy. Yeah, he literally traveled for 18 hours and then we left the next day at 4 a.m. Now, to hear that he had gone through all of that and to see him there, what did that mean to you? No, he's a superstar. Like, he's always been a superstar. He's my biggest supporter. And it's just fun to share that experience with them and have my husband here and we're, like, embarking on this moment because he's been there every step of the way from basketball to sitting down with agents and deciding who I want to be represented by. He's just kind of been in the back, my back pocket, so it's really fun. And we bring it up so much with you guys because you guys do have this incredibly supportive relationship and it is such a unique you know, job to play at the University of Texas and be a student athlete. And then they both have those professional ambitions, so I've got to think that it's nice having a guy in your corner that understands what you're going through. Definitely. I was just like, it's really scary now because we're going to be long distance and we're finally gonna be like real adults and not be in like this little microcosm of college, but we kind of knew what we were getting to when we decided to get married, when we decided to start dating seriously. So we're prepared. I think I wanted to be in a relationship where I could be a power couple and not just a power player. And he feels the same way. Like neither, neither one of us wanna dim each other's shine. It's like, we can do it together. So it's exciting to have that type of partnership. 
and a lot of FaceTime, I would imagine, since he'll be obviously doing yeah. one more year here at Texas, uh, playing with the football team and, of course, with you in Chicago. So are you guys prepared for that? No. <laughs> no. I'm going to cry tomorrow, but it's all for the greater good. Eventually we'll link up. Hopefully Chicago will draft him next year. So. Here's hoping. <laughs> I like the optimism. Well, for anyone that has any doubts about the unique skill set that you bring to the WNBA, of course, we are familiar um, with your ability to shot block. But here's a clip you posted on social media uh, the other the other day. It was you dunking. <laughs> when did you? We never really saw this in any of the UT games. So when did you realize you could dunk? I started dunking at 14. In high school, like I was actually kind of bad, but I could dunk. So. Before all of our travel games, my travel coach used to make me dunk so all the coaches would come to our court. So why haven't we seen you dunk in a game at Texas? It's much easier to dunk when there's no one there. I gotcha. Game. So is that going to be a skill set that we're going to eventually see come to fruition in the WNBA? Maybe. I mean, BG does it. You see Elena can dunk, Candice can dunk. Maybe, but I'm trying to focus on the layups first. I love it. Well, I know you said that this year's basketball team was one of the closer groups of women that you've had an opportunity to be around, and, and we saw that as we profiled this team, and they made that stretch through the tournament. What's it going to be like leaving this group? I honestly didn't think I would like be as emotional as I was or like that I would care and I honestly miss them like watching them have the draft party and support me and then everyone reaching out and coming back it's like it's weird to not be with somebody you've been with every single day and I'm gonna miss them they all have already made plans to like come to the San Antonio game and the Dallas game and they're just so happy for me and it's just really awesome to have a group of girls that like love me enough to be excited for me as well as themselves. I mean, this group accomplished so much this year. It really was one of those historical years for this basketball team. What do you make of this team next year? I'm excited for them. Um, I'm jealous because they're definitely going to make it to a Final Four next year, and I'm going to be really angry. But um, there's really nothing to, that's going to stop them. We don't really lose much. It's me and like a couple seniors, but we all were, we're not the whole team. We had a big part of bringing everyone else up to speed to like kind of pass the torch. So I think our se next senior class is going to do great at getting everybody in line and making sure that they're playing hard and representing for us. We don't want to go backwards. Well, let's talk about your next step. What's next for you? Well, I leave tomorrow for Chicago to start training camp with the Chicago Sky on Sunday. I mean, does that set in yet? You're a pro now. I don't want to, not yet yet, but it's kind of scary, like all these new things and new adventure. Like I literally hugged Paul for like 10 minutes when I went to the drive because I just, I was just so anxious and like nervous and I knew like change was coming. But I'm blessed and excited to like embark on this new part of my life. Well, Chicago is getting such a bright spot in you and such a talented player. I'm going to miss you here on the 40. Thank you so much for coming by and best of luck to you. Thank you for having me.